Okay, um, here we've laid out a bit of the uh, control system, uh, hopefully so it's a bit easier to understand and you can see where everything joins together. Uh, I'm going to show you how to bind the receiver to the remote, um, but first I'll just explain where the connections are. And you won't have it all connected like this just yet. Uh, in the next video I'm going to show you how to do some soldering and how to do the connections. So we've got the uh, Turnergy motor connected with three leads. So um, we've got a red, black and a, a yellow. Um, your heat shrink will probably just be red and black. Connected to the electronic speed controller. The electronic speed controller takes power um, from the battery. For, so there's a battery terminal here and that connects to here. So when we're ready to go we'll connect those two together. And takes that power down to the receiver along this wire and that goes into the one labelled throttle or um, so F, uh, THRO so not battery um, but S THRO the battery terminal is if you have an external battery um, set up that's not using the electronic speed controller so the, the receiver gets its power through the speed controller and into the receiver from the receiver I've got um, an aileron channel and that's going to two servos so one, two. If you had a six um, channel receiver you can use the auxiliary so the auxiliary port on this receiver you could set up for an extra servo. Unfortunately this DX5 doesn't have mixing to be able to use dual servos um, for ailerons so what we've had to do is um, solder up a little wire harness so it's just got one plug and it's going to two um, lots of three male headers and so they're plugging into each of the servos for the ailerons so we just need to make sure that we've got the colours matching up even though they're different colours we've got um, brown to black which is the negative red to red which is positive and we've got yellow or white which is our data line so that's what's um, sending pulses to the servos um, and controlling them We've also got elevator out over to here and we've got rudder out up to here. So um, we're going to plug the battery in in a second. I've got a little binding plug and before we have the controller synchronised or bound to the receiver, uh, we've got to go through a few little processes. The first one is we need to set up a bit of a fail safe. So the easiest fail safe that I like to use is having the throttle all the way off. So if I had the throttle all the way up and when we bind it to the receiver, if the plane flew out of um, a reception sort of area or there's, there was a miscommunication between these two, it would go into a fail safe mode and it would be whatever mode you bind it to. So if it lost communication with the transmitter, currently how I'd have it set up, it would go to full throttle and we don't want that. So we're going to go all the way down with the throttle and have our sticks all centered um, before we bind it. So you can turn your receiver on and just make sure that all of the trim, digital trims are set up right in the centre so you can hear short beeps or a long beep when it's in the centre so make sure they're all long beeps, the throttle doesn't have one so that's going the wrong way so that's the elevator, so we've got elevator up and down rudder is left and right, throttle up and down on the right stick and ailerons are left and right as well so in our fail safe mode we want to have the throttle um, all the way off so it's cutting out. So I'll just turn the power off for that. We're going to plug the battery into the speed controller and before we do that we've got this little bind plug and all it is is a lead that goes between the data line and the uh, negative line. So it's just grounding out the data line on the battery terminal um, and that's saying that's in bind mode. So we need to plug that in and when you plug all of these in you just need to make sure there's a little um, symbol on the side that says negative, positive and data, it's a little um, wave sign and you just need to make sure you get them all up the right way. The bind one doesn't have an orientation really because it's just um, linking the two ends together. So I've got the bind plug in, I'm going to plug the battery in and you'll see on the end of the, you can see on my fingernail there there's a flashing light on the um, receiver. So with that flashing, that means it's in the bind mode. We need to have our throttle all the way down, like I said before. And we're going to hold the trainer switch up on the controller. So hold that up before we turn it on. Turn the power to the receiver on. The um, receiver should flash in a different sequence. Once they're flashing 
um, together or it stops flashing, let the trainer switch go and with that beep it means that um, they're, they're bound, they're connected and they're ready to go. So now if I was move, to move an aileron we should get um, movement on both sides. So you can see both those ailerons moving. Uh, with my rudder, you can see the rudder moving and elevator. Now the um, DX5 has a, a dual rate switch so that when you're taking off or landing um, so that you don't have full movement in each of the control surfaces you can flick that down to low. So um, you can see I don't have as much movement now, it's 70% so that's 100, that's 70%. You can see when I flick that. So there it is, that's our um, control system. Now I'm going to show you uh, how to solder these bullet terminals on to both the motor and the um, speed controller and also we need to solder on uh, these two wires to an XT60 um, connection terminal. Right, I just thought I'd mention um, before we go flying or before we put it on the plane, now that the two are synced together you only need to do that once and they've both given each other a sort of a, a sequence or a number so you should be able to have uh, sort of a few of these controllers out in the field um, and because of the new technology uh, they're giving a, a serial number to each other and making sure they're communicating with the right one. So now they're bound together we can take out that little bind lead that doesn't need to stay in there and put that in a safe place um, and we can just check that the, the system still works. So power up the receiver again making sure the throttle's down in the uh, lowest position. Um, when it's not in its lowest position, often the speed controller, depending on the brand of it, uh, will have a programming sequence. So it'll give you different amounts of beeps um, to tell you what mode it's in. I've found that the standard mode that it's set up with at the moment is fine, so you don't need to worry about that. Unless you wanted to change some settings, you'd need to read the instructions for the speed controller and there'd be some settings in where you had the, the um, throttle when you turned it on. So checking now that my ailerons are still working, I've still got my elevator going, still got my rudder working and I can even test my um, motor just being careful though because there's a little pin on the back so that pin actually spins um, so if I, if I fired that up now it would jump around on the desk. I can hold that sort of fairly carefully, keep my fingers well clear of it and without a prop on it, you don't want to have a prop on it when you're testing it like this but I can just put a little bit of throttle on and just make sure that uh, motor is spinning and the further I push the throttle forward the faster it's going to go.